Here are some more new features in Photoshop CC 2015, some of which I think I can, I can see myself using almost every day, and others, not so much, but I'll at least point them out to you so that you have the opportunity to use them. So the first one is an important change to the Content Aware Move Tool, and that is the ability or the option to scale something once you've moved it. So let's say in this example here, I want to take this big cactus and I want to move it over a little bit more. So I'm going to make a rough selection here of this cactus, and I've got a blank layer, I've got sample all layers, and here's the new feature right here that says Transform on Drop. So I'm going to drag it over here and pull it down, and then you'll see it right away I get transformation handle. So I can drag it to say I want it to be much bigger. I'm going to even make it a little, there we go. And I can of course rotate it slightly if I felt that was necessary. And then when I hit enter, it finalizes the movement, but also then does the content aware move. If I deselect it, it's pretty good. It needs a bit more work around here. But but as you can imagine, there'll be times where when you do the content aware move, you just want to tweak it slightly, make it slightly bigger or smaller or rotate, and that's where this feature comes in. Now, the next thing I want to show you is a feature which, frankly, I'm not sure that I'm going to use all that much, but it is interesting, I suppose, for people that have struggled with adjustment layers and understanding how can I make adjustment layers only affect one certain layer, and that's the ability to turn adjustments into smart filters. So I'm going to come back to this document here and Right or control click and choose convert to smart object. So let me undo that for a second just to show you that normally under the adjustments menu, all of these things are very permanent because they're adjusting the image directly as opposed to using an adjustment layer. But if we go back and convert to smart object, now you'll see that the majority of these are available as a smart filter. So for example, if I use levels and let's do a very dramatic adjustment and click OK. Now you see it says Smart Filter Levels and it has a mask. To edit it, just like any smart filter, you can double click on it and make any change and then click OK. Now as I mentioned, personally I use adjustment layers. The difference is, or the reason people might use this is right now I only have one layer, so the adjustment layer would only affect this one particular layer. But if I had multiple layers and I put in an adjustment layer at a certain point, it's going to affect all the layers below unless you make it into a clipping mask. Here, I guess the theory is at least it's a little easier to understand because you can see it very easily and say that one layer is being affected by this particular adjustment. The only challenge I find with it is what if I want to have a layer that I have both a smart filter and an adjustment layer. The problem that we always run into is smart filters only have one mask. So in other words, if I wanted to do an adjustment layer to affect only the sky, I could do that with the mask and then I could still apply a smart filter to the image itself. So like I said, this is one of these things where you'll just have to decide for yourself if this is something that, that you can see yourself using or not. Personally, I'm going to undo this and I would use a levels adjustment layer for a couple of reasons. Part of it is I like the fact that it's right here in the properties panel. I can adjust on the fly. And then if I did have multiple layers, like I said, I could, I could clip it with the layer below so it would only ever affect this one layer. Next, let's talk a little bit about the changes to the libraries panel. Libraries are introduced in a previous version of Photoshop CC. And there's been a couple of changes under the hood. If you use multiple applications like Illustrator and InDesign, it's a little more efficient in the way that libraries are shared between them. But there are two other interesting changes. One is the addition of Adobe Stock, and that is the ability to search for and bring in comps of stock photos. This is based on the fact that Adobe bought Photolia a while back. Uh, so this will be an option. Now you still have to pay separately for the photos. It doesn't like you're getting all these stock photos for free, but the ability to bring in the stock photos as comps is the free part. The other change, which is important for me, is, let's get rid of this here. I have in my library some predefined graphics such as this one right here. Normally I would just drag it into the document, but when I do and hit enter, it automatically creates a smart object. And you'll see the symbol is slightly different here. It's got this little cloud symbol on it to indicate that it's a smart object from the library. Now, if you don't want that to happen, if you just want it to be a one-shot deal, hold down Option or Alt as you drag in your library 
item, and then it will just be a standard smart object if that is already a smart object. In other words, that happened because that logo was already a smart object, so when I dragged it in from the library, it remained smart. If you had a layer which was not a smart object, then when you dragged it in, it would convert it to a smart object. Unless you hold down Option Alt, then it would no longer convert it. Here's the button to search Adobe Stock Photos. Now, at the time that I was recording this video, this function wasn't quite hooked up properly yet, so I can't really demonstrate it, but you click on it, it would bring you to a website where you can search through photos, vectors, illustrations, and download a comp version, which you can actually use in a document and make changes to it in terms of colors and things of that nature. And then if you decide you want to purchase it, you can update it. For now, like I said, this is not working in my version, but you can at least see that the library function is where it exists. A couple of other small but important changes. The preferences panels had a bit of a reorganization, so it's a little easier to work with it now when you go to your preferences. So you'll probably notice some changes where they're just a, a little less clutter and they've reorganized things better based on the topic area that you're working with, whether it's general or interface or workspace or tools or whatever it might be. Now, one other thing to mention, there's also a glyphs panel. So if you're working with type and you want to use some of the more unusual type options, there is a glyphs panel that's been around in other software for quite some time now. It's available in Photoshop. And also an important change in the world of Camera Raw. Let me bring open a document here. And you can see this document is got a bit of sort of fog to it. So I'm going to make this into a smart object so I can apply the Camera Raw filter. And one of the new options in the effects panel is Dehaze. Now since it's called Dehaze, if you want to remove haze, you move to the right and you'll see that it, it's attempting to take away some of that haze. I would then have to make some additional changes to it like opening up the shadows and things like that to make it look the way I want. But you can also, if you go to the left, negative, it's actually adding more haze. So if you want your photo to look more foggy than it already was, you can certainly do that as part of this change to Camera Raw. So this was intended to be a quick overview of some of the key features. I've also done separate videos on a couple of other topics you can find here as well. I'm Dave Cross. Thanks for watching.